welcome to another video session with Bullionite. Um, today, I'm going to focus on something that's very, very important to everyone, I'm sure, and that is the stock market. You know, some people call it the equity markets, um, the stock markets, um, but mostly we're going to focus on the stock markets in the United States. Now, obviously, there's things happening internationally as well. But I want to have more of a one on one conversation today, more about how we think or what we think about the stock markets, um, what could be happening in the stock markets and, and how you can kind of get ready for what could happen. Okay, so that's why I feel this is very important because I've gotten many questions and, and a lot of clients have asked us, you know, what's going on with these fundamental events? How do I understand this, right? Now, I even did a, a video recently about the major fundamental events that have unfolded recently and how they have affected the markets. We've even done videos on specific markets that have gotten significantly affected or responded to those fundamental events. But today we're gonna to take a kind of like a, a bigger picture view on about the stock market and about our psychology when we talk about the stock markets and when we invest in the stock markets and, and how do we uh, protect ourselves from taking massive losses when the market decides to come down significantly, right? So here's the first thing that I wanna kind of point out to you. Like first, most people are exposed to the stock market right now in some fashion or form. You're either invested in the stock market through your stock account that you might have through one of your online brokers. You're in the stock market through a retirement account that you might have through work, like a 401k or a government-sponsored um, you know, retirement plan. You are exposed to the stock market if you have a retirement account like an IRA, like an individual retirement account. So this is why this topic is so important because you are definitely exposed as an investor into the stock market, whether it's the Dow Jones, the S&P 500, the NASDAQ, whatever you know, instrument you're exposed to. And therefore, it's important to understand what's going on right now and what's coming up so you can make the most educated and intelligent decisions when it comes to the markets, okay? Now, here's the first thing that I wanna kinda of mention. The length of this bull market, okay? I remember very specifically when the market turned around after dropping significantly from like late 2007 up to probably like early 2009, right? When, remember the stock market started dropping in October 2007, you know, just after it had that big high. But I remember specifically when it turned around. It was in March of 2009. That was when the Federal Reserve at that time introduced the first quantitative easing. Right, And as soon as the quantitative easing or what we call the ease uh, or the printing of money, when QE1, and after that, obviously, they've had many tranches of, you know, QE2 and QE3 and things like that, right? But when they first introduced the printing of money, that's when the market turned around. After dropping from 14,700 to about 6,600, then the market started turning around in March of 2009. So where are we today? We're in 2019, in August of 2019. So that is more than 10 years from the actual turnaround, okay? So I want you to kind of let that sink in to your mind. This stock market that your money has been in like your retirement money, your investment money, your speculative money, has been in a market that has been running up with a few corrections along the way since March of 2009. So it's been more than 10 years. So this bull market is actually more than 10 years. The average length of a normal bull market is about seven years or a little bit more. So we're really extended on this part. So I want you to really get that to sink in. And what does that mean, okay? The next thing is I want you to understand when you have a bull market that has gone up so much, at the end of this market, which is where we, I believe we're at that point, right? You find it to be very stretched. And I want you to understand what is the concept when we say it's stretched? It's very simple. It's like a rubber band. When you pull it, in the beginning, it's easy to keep pulling it, right? But at the end, the elasticity, it's stretched out so much that it, you find it so difficult to pull it further. And that's what 
you're observing right now in the stock market because in this top end of the curve, the market it may go higher, right? For example, you'll see it come down and then go back up and create a little bit more of a record high, a little bit more of a record high. But it finds it very difficult to keep making these new highs. In other words, it's getting more and more difficult for the price to go higher. And then suddenly, it drops significantly, right? And there's a reason for that. But I want you to kind of visualize that we about the elasticity of a market. Because when you understand this concept, you begin to understand how it is that you get into markets and get out of markets. And when you should be getting into markets and getting out of markets, right? So understand that we've been in a bull market that's longer than 10 years. And the market is, the elasticity has been completely stretched right now, okay? Now, why is that important? Because I'm going to bring up a concept called probability versus possibility or possibility versus probability. Okay, what do I mean by this? Lots of people like friends, clients, investors, they tell me, well, Makaram, it's possible that it can keep going higher. It's possible it can do this. It's possible. It can. Yes, anything is possible, right? But in the investment world and in the trading world, we don't trade or invest on possibilities. We trade and invest on probabilities. And I'm going to explain that to you. What does that mean? It means today, if you were to come up to me or if any of my friends were to come up to me and say, hey, guess what? I'm going to make a billion dollars tomorrow. Is it possible? And you'll have to look at him. You'll have to think about his life a little bit, your relationship with him. And you'll be like, well, it's possible. Yes, it's possible. But then if you ask him, is it probable? Most likely not. It's not probable that your friend who you've known for five years, who's been living the life the same way, hasn't done anything different, hasn't created a new idea, hasn't created a new company. But if he came up to you and said, I'm going to make a billion dollars tomorrow, is it probable? No. So the probability is low, but the possibility is the same as any other event. Do you understand that? This is why I want you to understand this concept that when you're trading, when you're investing, when you're thinking about how much more money you can make in the market? Or when you're thinking of, well, will I lose more money or will I give up a lot of these profits? Start thinking in terms of probability versus possibility. Now, here's one thing I can say very, very clearly. If we were to look at the markets right now, the Dow, the NASDAQ, the S&P 500, whichever market, if we ask a simple question, what is the probability or which direction is most probable for this market when these fundamental events unfold? Which direction is it most prob probable to go? And the answer is, it's most probable to come down because it's gone up so much. It's gone up for 10 years and or 10, 10, 10 plus years. It's completely stretched. There's a significant amount of fundamental events that are unfolding. So the highest probability direction is for this market to come down. The lower probability direction is for this market to continue to go higher. So you have to make decisions. If investing and trading is based on making decisions on probabil probability, not possibility, then you have to say, well, if it's most probable to come down, like if it's probability is to come down and it has a lower probability to go higher, then what is your course of action? First, don't think about making money. Don't think about losing money. Don't think about anything else. But the first thing you need to think about is how do I manage my risk at this point? Because this is the place where you have to start thinking like an institution. You have to start thinking, saying, how do I manage my risk, protect my profits, and lose the least amount of money if the market decides to turn around? Do you understand that? Why? Because it has a low probability of continuously going higher because it's gone up so much and it's so stretched. And it has a higher probability of actually turning around and coming down. Does that make sense? Okay, now, 
The next thing that, in, uh, that is related to this concept of probability versus possibility is something else that I try to teach um, my, my followers, my, my clients, is the fact on how do you actually play a market that has had such a long-term trend of a movement, right? So let me tell you what, for example, I'll go through this because I, I went through this, you know, as, as the markets were, were performing, whether it's in the stock market, whether it's in gold, whether it's in crude oil. And I'll give you some dates. October 2007, the stock market was up at 14,700, okay? And then suddenly it started dropping. Yes, there was a subprime mortgage crisis. Yes, there was the recession issues. Yes, there was an election year coming up. Everything, everything, right? But the reality is it was at a record high at 14,700. Most of the brokers or brokerage firms that you were talking to probably did not tell you it's gonna come down, right? They, they didn't tell you that. They kept telling you it's gonna go higher. But what did the market do? it went on its highest probability direction was at that time after it was topped out after it was stretched out when the fundamental events unfolded it decided to come down right now where did it drop it went from 14700 in the dow to about 6600 in the dow till around march of 2009 so from october 2007 to march of 2009 okay now why am i saying this because here's a very interesting rule when you trade a market or when you're invested in a market, the first 10% of that market's movement, and for this example, let's say we're taking the example of the market going higher from 2009, right? Because it has come down significantly and it has kept coming down and then suddenly it turned around in 2009 because of some fundamental events, right? And it started going up. The first 10%, I don't care about. And I want you to learn that. Don't care about that first 10% of a movement. Why? That first 10% of the movement, we leave it to the egotistical traders. We leave it to the traders who want to be right. We leave it to the traders who want to be called super traders, right? Because they want that accolade or they want that, that fame, okay? We don't care about fame. We don't care about that. What we care about is how can we consistently profit from the markets? That's the goal of any trading, right? And reduce the amount of losses you take. So the first thing is in a major market trend change direction, when it begins to change direction, don't care about the first 10%. Then there will be specific buy signals it, because we're talking about a market turning around and going higher. Well, let's talk about buy signals. There'll be specific buy signals on a weekly chart and on a monthly chart and specific technical indicators that will tell you that now you should get into this market, which we would have covered in some of our videos before this or we'll cover in the videos that we'll keep releasing, okay? Certain technical indicators, certain buy signals that are major buy signals in monthly charts, in weekly charts, right? Now, after you've let that first 10% for the egotistical traders um, to be part of, and actually, they're actually figuring out the market for us, okay? Actually, they're doing us a favor, right? And it's also the highest risk place, so you're letting them take the risk. You then walk into that market after the direction has been established, and then the market begins to trend. So here's where the bulk of your money is made, by being in the middle portion of that market. In that middle, so let's say if this is an uptrending market, like after it's come down, it you know, kind of traded sideways and then starts going up, you're in this middle portion of this market, okay? That's what I call the 70% of that market movement. So you don't care about the first 10%, and now you're part of that 70% of that market movement, right? Which could be mean way more for you in terms of returns. But we're not talking about returns, we're just talking about how to recognize it. The biggest money-making chunk is in that 70%, or it's what we call the sweet spot on any chart, or on a trade, or any investment. Then, after that running up of that 70%, the market will begin to again go into extreme volatility, will act like a two-year-old, and I've done a video on that, you know how markets tend to bottom and top, or topping process of a market and a bottoming process of a market, and when a market begins to act like a two-year-old child, right, that's when you know, it's telling you, I don't want to keep going this way. I don't, you want to keep putting money into me? Okay, but I'm going to take that money. You know, I'm going to keep, keep grabbing that money. The market's going to say that. Whatever market it, it could be crude oil, it could be gold, it could be stocks, it could be anything. But when it begins to act like a two-year-old child, let's say in this example at the top end of the curve, it's telling you, 
I don't want to keep going up. But people keep thinking that that's what it's going to do. That's one of the signals, right? So what I say is, now I don't care about the last 20% of this market. And like, Mukharam, what do you mean? 20% of a market? You don't care about that? 20% of the market? No. Why? Because that last 20% is for the greedy. Is for the greedy. What do I mean by that? Meaning, if you have entered into this market in a, in a proper, well thought out manner, and you took part in 70% of this market movement, like many people have, you know, fortunately, many people have in the stock market, the last 20% shouldn't matter because that's also the next highest risk portion of this market. So your job is to start planning an exit in that last 20%, just like institutions do. Because that last 20% is where most retail investors and hardworking people start watching videos and, and they start seeing people gurus on the news and channels and they start putting money into a market that is elastically very stretched and has the highest probability of now turning around and coming down significantly. This is why we say don't, don't worry about the last 20%. Or if you're in that portion now, start planning your exit because that's for the greedy. So the first 10%, we don't care about it because it's a high risk place. It's for the egotistical traders who want to be, call, want to be known as being right. The 70% of the market movement, that's the sweet spot. You want to be part of it. And then at the end of the curve, the last 20%, don't care. Start planning your exit because that's how you can take that chunk of money that you made and move to something else. Because usually what happens is when human psychology comes in and all this media and everything comes in and you decide to continue to stay in that market in that last 20%, that's when suddenly when the market turns around, you give up a significant percentage of your profits. And in some cases, and sadly, for some people, they not only give up a significant percentage of their profits, it starts eating into the capital that was initially there in the account. Like I've heard people say, oh, I've lost 30%, I've lost 40%, I lost 50% in the 2007, 2008 crash. I'm like, how can you lose, forget 50%, but how can you lose 20, 25% and not make a change? Do you understand that? Because you don't lose 25% in one day, it started out as a 5%, a 6%, an 8% loss, and you refuse to take action. Do you get what I'm saying? But knowing when to take that action, what to look for is what's very important, okay? So what I'm gonna do is I'm, I'm now going to share with you a, a way on how you should start looking at trying to protect your profits, okay? Because we went over what's going on in the big picture in the markets. Then we went over the fact like how to recognize these movements, right? And now, how do you start thinking about protecting profits, okay? Because risk management is not just about not trying to lose money. You know, it's actually not the correct way to approach risk management, but a lot of people do that. We'll cover that in another video. But risk management is also about protecting your profits because when you protect those profits and not give it up back to the markets or back to whatever institution you're trading with or whatever, right? Then you can take that money and you can build something bigger. So that's why learning how to protect profits is very important. So here's something that I wanna share with you. And I've always said this, markets, will always communicate to you. And people ask me, Mukharam, what does that really mean? What do you mean markets communicate? And when you say, listen to the market, what I mean by that is forget all these gurus and the news and all these things, right? If you just look at the price action of a market, price action meaning what is the price doing? How is it responding to certain major events and major things going on? The, the important thing is that if you listen to that, the market will tell you exactly what you have to do. You don't have to worry about your ego, you wanting to be right, or you thinking you're wrong. Forget all that. Like I said, put your arrogance, put your ego aside, and humbly listen to the market. Now the market, you don't have to be this person where you have to kind of, you know, like go very close and listen to the market or really stare at the screen. No, no, no. The market will be loud 
it'll bellow at you, okay? And what I mean by that is the price action at certain points in the charts, like the monthly charts, the weekly charts, especially in long-term trending markets, when they begin to turn around, like neon signs in Vegas, you will see these signs come up in the charts. It'll show it if you know where to look. That's the, that's the point. Okay, a lot of people, they say, oh, I'm looking at a chart. Oh, I'm, I'm doing this analysis, I'm doing this. But they don't know what they're looking for. They don't know where to look. You gotta train your eye so you can look at the chart at the right spots and then go, okay, this is that big neon sign in Vegas. So understand that. A market on the right charts, you'll learn that with us as you continue to follow us, like neon signs in Vegas will tell you when it wants to go up and when it wants to come crashing down, okay? The next thing is volatility. When volatility increases significantly at the top end of the curve or at the bottom end of the curve, it is a signal, a very clear signal that the market wants to continue to go higher, uh, sorry, the market wants to come down significantly if, if the volatility increases at the top or the market wants to turn around and go up significantly if the volatility increases at the bottom end of a downtrend, okay? So I'm gonna go over that again very, very quickly, and this is what I call my two-year-old principle. People who have kids will understand this. If you have a two-year-old, or if you're someone who's going into between that two and three-year-old, you know how crazy they become in their behavior, right? Markets will behave like that when they're finished with a trend. Like for example, if they've gone up and they've been going up for years and suddenly they wanna come down, they'll start acting like a two-year-old child. If a market has been coming down significantly for a significant amount of time and it's decided it's done, it wants to go up, it's gonna act like a two-year-old and the volatility is gonna be significant, okay? Now, the next thing is to watch for sideways movement. Once it goes up significantly, if it spends a significant amount of time in a sideways movement being volatile, that's also a trap. Why? Look at the Dow Jones. A lot of people are invested in the stock market right now, right? But when I talk to people, they say, oh, I'm calm, the market's at a record high. The market's here, the market's... Yeah, but the market hasn't gone anywhere. It's gone between 24,000 and 28,000 for the last year and a half. Do you know that? Lots of people say, well, I'm calm, it's gone up a lot. No, not really. It's gone from 24,000 to 28,000, back and forth, back and forth, back and forth inside that channel. And all that time, your money is pretty much sitting there and just doing that, up and down, up and down, not doing anything. That's another way that you know it's beginning to top out. It's getting ready. If it wants to come down, which is the highest probability direction, if it breaks through that support level, then it can come down significantly, right? now. Next thing is I want to talk about a major event that's coming up, which is the election year, which is next year. The fundamentals, I've covered some of this, we'll go deeper into this, but I want to quickly mention we have the trade war going on between the US and China. We have China devaluing its currency, which is a major effect that it can take on the markets and the ripple effect could be great. I, I know how these ripple effects work. I was trading the markets 2007, 2008, 2009, when the ripple effect actually started across the pond and it came over to us, right? Um, then you're talking about interest rates being reduced suddenly after going up for a couple, year and a half or so or two years and then suddenly being reduced in the US. Problematic, right? And then the big one, which is the election year next year. There's a lot of confusion, a lot of like unknowns about it. Markets don't like unknowns. Take that from this video. Markets do not like unknowns. It's just like us people. We don't like unknowns. If you talk to an average person, we like our world and our life to be very known and identified and simple, right? But when there's a lot of unknowns coming at us, we get all uh, like, you know, um, like uh, unbalanced and we're like, oh my God, like what's going on? We have to pivot. Markets are like that. They do not like unknowns. And the election year, whichever way the election goes, is a major unknown. And you have to start watching that and understand that. Now, how do we know this? Because one of the things we've noticed is that gold prices have gone up significantly in the last two and a half to three months, even with the stock market in that range, close to the 28,000, 26,000, 27,000 level. Whenever gold prices tend to go higher, 
as the stock market keeps going higher and producing new record highs, to me, it's been like the canary in the mine for the stock market. Why? Because the gold market is supposed to go in an inverse correlation or in an opposite direction to the stock market. So if the stock market keeps going to a record high, gold shouldn't be going up two, three hundred dollars in, in the last three months, which is significant. A very high percentage movement for in the commodity class, right? So think about that. Gold moving higher as the stock market keeps producing new record highs is like the canary in the mine. So I want you to be cautious. And this is another th reason to start thinking, what can I do, okay? So here's a, here's a quick step. You need to start looking at alternative places where you can take this profit that you've made from the stock market and, and put it in a place where it won't take that much of a hit as it's coming down. You know, what I mean is there's many places it's important to start looking at it right now. Don't look at it after the market drops 20% or 30% and say, oh, you know what? I want to move this money like people did in 2007, 2008. Start looking and talking to people who understand where you can put these funds. You can reach out to us and talk about that as well. But here's the important thing. Start looking at alternative places. Is it precious metals? Is it you know, um, alternative investments? Is it income producing investments? Anything that is away from a market that has a high probability of coming down. Because here's the rule, right? You need to start thinking like an institution. What do I mean by that? Institutions have one of, they have a few rules. One of the rules is you have to make money. If you don't make money as an institution, you won't be around as an institution too long. Do you get it? Like if you're a successful institution for money making, if you're not making money, you're not gonna be around for too long. So what's the institution's first goal? Be in markets where I can make the most money. Do you understand that? That's the goal of institutions. I wanna be in asset classes or, or in categories of markets that I can make the most money. Once you've made a significant amount of money there, and once it becomes difficult to make money in that market, because institutions also don't like to work too hard, okay? They wanna make a lot of money, but they also don't wanna to work too hard. So if it becomes too difficult, for example, if you go back a, couple, a few years, you can come to work, fall asleep, and make money in the stock market. It was that simple. Come to work, fall asleep, make money in the stock market. Because it kept going higher, 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 higher. Now it's not like that. It's difficult to make money in the stock market. It's too volatile. It's showing you that it wants to behave like a two-year-old. So what do I mean by this? Institutions will like to get out, take out that money, take out those profits, and go to a place, again, that is easy to make money and has the highest probability of rising up in value and making money, right? So what did we talk about? The stock market being up so much, for 10 years in a row and being so stretched has the highest probability of the highest probability direction is for it to turn around and come down significantly it has a low probability of continuously going higher okay so what you want to do is think about moving your money to a place that is oversold or a market that has the ability to now turn around and go up significantly get out of a market that is overbought which is the stock market which is elastically so stretched and has finds it very difficult to go higher in price that's what i want you to kind of get from this video it's not to panic i don't want you to panic i don't want you to think the market's going to drop tomorrow what i want you to understand is begin to prepare prepare early and start making these decisions because human beings find it very difficult to make decisions decisions is, a, is something that people get so scared of but we, you know, we even have a series on decision making. And I even have coined a term about decision exhaustion, okay? And I've, I've done a small video on that. We'll continue to do videos about that. But we'll teach you how to get the strength, the mental strength, the emotional strength to make a strong decision and say, hey, this is how I want to protect my profits. And this is how I want to build my account continuously and build wealth.
Okay, so until next time, happy and successful trading and um, please continue to watch our videos and if you have any questions, reach out to us about our videos and our topics. Okay, thank you. Content is for educational purposes only. This is not investment advice from Bullionite LLC. There is always risk for substantial losses in investing and or trading through any financial instrument with or without this or any other type of advertised product. Past performances are not indicative of future results. Different types of investments involve varying degrees of risk. Specific strategies or education presented by Bullionite LLC and its associates in this video are for educational purposes only.